Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're gonna to be talking about Suzy and building a basic grid. Now, keep in mind, this is Suzy version two, so if you uh, are not on version two, make sure you do that so you're following along. Uh, we did explain that in the first, but just wanna clarify that for this one as well. And what we have here is basic, uh, just really a basic HTML site. If you look at it here, we just have our main content right here, and we have an aside with uh, a list item. And all I really did was make this list not look so terrible, like a normal dotted list. I mean, it doesn't look good now, but uh, I really just added lines underneath, so it maybe looks more like a normal navigation. And it's also going to, uh, the borders underneath are also gonna help sort of realize how wide this aside column is. So uh, as you can see in the CSS, it's really just these lines here. It's not a whole lot. I just, you know, display block, block put some padding, border bottom, got rid of the, the margin and padding on the UL. So what we wanna do first is we need to make a container. So uh, with any of these grid systems uh, or anything really, you, you need to have your stuff in a container, right? Because your container is defining the base width of everything. So um, thankfully, Suzy makes a nice, really easy mix in for us. That is what you'd expect. So it's at include and then just container. Now in here, we can put something like 60 M's. And now, uh, sorry, the semicolon goes after like that. And now we come back to our page and refresh, and you can see uh, this is taking up 60 M's, or we could even put um, something like 800 pixels, right? Or even better, we could put 80% if you want a fluid layout. Okay, so we have 80% here, and this is going to take up 80%, no matter, you know, no matter what. Cool, so that's, that's great, container accepts a width, right? And that's going to set the width of our container. And if you see here, we put it on our body. So uh, what it's really giving our body is just a margin left, margin right auto, as well as a max width of 80%. So really nothing crazy or nothing out of the ordinary. Now we need to put our two areas, our main content, which is our main and our side in columns. Now to do this, we don't actually have to define a grid, right? I mean, we could, we could have global settings, which we're going to go over. However, all we have to do to make this sort of basic grid is, I'm gonna get some space down here so we can add some new code down here. And we're going to say main, the main content area. And then using a mixin that is span, uh, we're gonna define how much this spans. So we're gonna say add include, span, and then now let's say we wanted this main content area to be eight of 12 columns. So you type eight space of space 12, and then semicolon. Now what this is going to do is assign it the width of whatever eight of 12 columns would be. Let's come here and refresh. And you can see our main content area has now been given a width of 66.101%. And it's floating left and has a margin right of 1.69%. Notice how that math goes pretty deep, right? I mean, the benefit of using a framework like this is that you don't have to do that math yourself and possibly have an error somewhere rounding or anything. Basically, you just don't have to have that, that you know, on you, you can let the software figure out exactly what the math is, so it's more precise, right? So now we have our span eight of 12, but uh, let's say you wanted a 16 column grid. It's really as simple as saying eight of 16. And now we come here and this is going to be taking up half because eight is half of 16, right? So just like Singularity, if you watch those, it's taking the percentage uh, that your column is taking up of the total container columns and it's doing that math for you. So it's not like it's creating 16 columns here. It's just sort of saying, all right, eight is half of 16 plus the margin is 49.36 plus 
this 1.26 percentage is going to equal what it takes uh, plus another one of these 4.9 to equal 100%. Cool, so let's put this back to eight of 12, just like that. And you'll notice our side is doing some weird stuff just because the main content area is floating and the aside is not so of course it's being brought out of the document flow and we need to put this back in and say uh, that the aside is also taking up a span so just like that we could say aside and we could say add include span and then now we want to say 4 of 12 semicolon refresh and what has happened? Okay, so our side has been pushed down. You would have expected that this would have filled up in there, right? Because eight plus four is 12. But what this doesn't understand is the position, right? We're saying, sure, this is, this is four of eight, but it thinks it's just four of eight. So what it's doing is not only assigning it the correct width that it needs to fill in here, it's also giving it this margin right. Now, if we were to uncheck this margin right, you'll see this slide up in here. So how can we have this with no margin? Well, you could do a couple of things, but I think the best thing and the most obvious thing to do is to say that this is in the ninth position of the columns, right? Because if you're telling Susie that this is in Starting from 9, 10, 11, and 12, it's going to know that it goes to the very end and shouldn't put a margin right because it's smart like that. And this is why you use uh, systems like this because they, they can do all this stuff for you. So now we can say for at 9 of 12. So this is four columns starting at the ninth position of 12 columns. We save this. Now on refresh, we have no margin right, just a width uh, of the correct amount and a float of the correct amount. Now, because we had this set to 80%, you'll notice that not only is our grid fluid, but since everything's set in percentages, all of our columns are fluid and our margin, our gutters as well. So cool, this is a really basic grid. We have a main content area, a side column, and for a lot of stuff, I mean, this is this is a pretty good start, right? I mean, we had, really, we had three lines of code. We had this include, we had this include, um, and the container, two spans and a container, and that's it, and we got this grid going. Now, this is just scratching the surface of Suzy. And in the next video, we're gonna talk about some of the new things you can do with SAS Maps to set up your global settings for Suzy and have a more uh, configured grid that's not just so eight of 12, whatever, right? So here we have our basic example and we're just gonna keep on getting more advanced from here. We're gonna do some asymmetric grid stuff. We're gonna show you how to make responsive grids. Pretty much everything you need to know about the new version, uh, Suzy 2. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts and thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, we have new videos twice a week, usually Tuesdays and Thursday nights. And if you feel like supporting Level Up Tuts, we now have on leveluptuts.com a pro account version of Level Up Tuts where you can give back to Level Up Tuts and get some new features while you're at it. So check that out. As always, we love uh, hear questions or comments. We have a forum for that on Level Up Tuts or you can leave a comment on the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.